I was met with incredulous laughter when I announced my intention to buy Diary of an Apple Tree, but we've seen enough Whittington Press and enough Miriam McGregor on this channel to know this is no joke. There were 385 copies of this edition produced, here I'll be looking at one of the 65 B copies. We have a quarter leather binding in maroon brown set off from the boards with a gilt trim. The boards themselves are printed in red and orange with an enlarged design of the eponymous tree. The title is stamped in gilt on the slender spine, and all four edges of the text block are trimmed and bound together with striped head and tail bands. The slipcase on this occasion is a relatively plain affair, being bound in subdued orange laid paper. It is nice and sturdy though. The binding was done at the fine bindery and is up to the usual lofty standard. Opening the book out when met with end papers of that same orange laid stock, followed by about 40 pages of zircon mould made paper. The text, or one and a half pages of it, is set in 12 point bell in ochre ink. The vast bulk of the book is taken over by the engravings. There are 13 large engravings of the same apple tree throughout the year. The first and last of these are identical, so 12 unique engravings, an unusual decision until you realise that the whole point is that the tree is an allegory for the repeating quasi-infinite cycle of life. Of course, a deciduous tree will change a lot throughout the year, but it's remarkable just how much variety McGregor has managed to squeeze in. We have the tree in blossom, the tree silhouetted by moonlight, cows sheltering under the tree, the tree shrouded in fog, a frozen tree, all artfully depicted in McGregor's trademark style. Each image occupies the recto page of a two-page spread, with the verso page left blank. I could imagine some nice textual vignettes sitting alongside each engraving, but alas it wasn't to be. In addition to those 13 main engravings, there are two smaller ones, one on the title page and one on the colophon. The book opens with a short introductory text by McGregor that gives an evocative account of the tree and of the engraving's production. The introduction is laced with a note of sadness when we learn that our beloved apple tree broke shortly after the final engraving was completed. It's also a bit ironic in light of the book's theme of infinite repetition, and I couldn't help but think that it would have been quite poignant if that duplicated last engraving had been replaced by an image of the now dead tree. Perhaps McGregor preferred the happier memory of the tree in its spring glory. The book ends with a colophon page bearing production details and is signed by the author. This B edition comes with a portfolio of the engravings. It is hard bound in that same orange paper we saw on the slipcase. All 12 of the main engravings are included within. My copy was acquired from the estate of an acquaintance of the author and includes a 13th inscribed engraving. It is hand coloured, leading me to believe that this is the extra engraving that would normally have been included with the A edition. It also seems to be the image that was enlarged for the cover design. 